It's a long road from the composer's manuscript to a finished volume of sheet music on the player's desk. One way station along this road is music engraving. Even in the age of computers, hand engraving lends a touch of superior quality to handy publications. Working with a punch, nib, hammer and rasp, just as in Bach's day, the engraver meets the high technical and aesthetic standards required for high quality sheet music. It need hardly be mentioned that Henry has been working for years to develop a computer notation program capable of duplicating the typical features and qualities of Henry publications. Given the wide range of alternatives in musical notation, not all the problems have been ideally solved. As a result, even today Henry's Urtext editions are still produced in the time-honored way by hand engraving. Let's watch a plate of engraving in the process of its creation. Before the engraver can hammer and gouge the musical signs and letters into a thin sheet of lead, the musical text prepared by the scholar editor first has to be marked up. This is where the ideal page and line breaks are introduced from the standpoint both of the music and the performer. Now, work can begin on the plate itself. First, the distance between staves is defined by dividing up the page. The lines of the staves are now cut with a five-pronged rule. Where differences in pitch cause the distance between the staves to differ as well, a good engraver will find just the right visual balance to ensure an agreeable and uncluttered appearance on the page. Once the vertical division is complete, the notes can be spread horizontally on the page according to their durations. A logical placement of notes and signs is crucial for practical music making and makes the music considerably easier to read. Even the character of the piece is reflected in the engraving. An allegro movement will be engraved much more densely than a lento. Now the engraver sketches the layout on the page with a steel nib. Using these little steel punches, the signs are hammered into the plate one at a time. All this is done in mirror version so that the page will read from left to right after printing. Full concentration is essential for each punch requires a special stroke. To reduce the tension on the plate, the engraver smooths the reverse side. Small slurs are also hammered in with steel punches. These so-called single lip cutters are used to cut stems, ledger lines, beams and slurs into the plate freehand. Corrections, though difficult, can be made. First a sign to be corrected is marked on the back with a pincer. Then it is hammered out with the appropriate punch.
The front side is smoothed out and the staff lines redrawn if necessary. Now the sign can be punched. Finally, after some eight hours of work, page 40 of Henley's text edition of Schubert's Violin Sonata, Opus 137, number 3, is fully engraved and ready to print. A three-edge rasp is used to remove the projecting margins and edges. Finally, the plate is polished with a brush. To help the sub-editor in charge of the edition to check the engraving for mistakes and inconsistencies, a so-called green off print is made from the finished plate. Here he can enter his corrections. Formerly, printing used to take place directly from the plate. Today, once the engraving has been approved for printing, publishers make a black and white negative off print to serve as a master for a positive film. The razor-sharp engraving can now be printed by photo offset and sent to the binders. Music engraving has set standards that the computer must and will reach. In the future, besides a sound, scholarly critical text, musicians and music lovers all over the world will still be able to take pleasure in the clear, balanced and easily readable appearance of Henley Urtext Editions.